What's going on guys? So today I am out here at the Van Lee Beacon and my cargo trailer and we're going to take a look at an innovative product that can help you in several different camping environments or even storage environments. So I don't think you're going to want to miss this video. Hang tight. I'll be right back. All right guys, so what you are looking at is the king of power stations. This thing is simply massive. This is the new Blue Yeti AC200P. This is, I believe, kind of their evolutionary step up from the AC200, even though I really don't know what the main differences are. I think the P might stand for phosphate, but I'm not 100% certain. This has LG battery cells inside of it. This is a beast. It weighs over 60 pounds, so keep that in mind. And really what it's designed to compete directly against is your 2000 watt gas generators. So a lot of you folks out there are utilizing 2000 watt generators to power up your smaller RVs, turn all the lights on, maybe use the microwave, hair dryers, things like that while you're camping, specifically boondocking. And this is designed to essentially be an alternative to something like that but also has the means of being recharged through solar power, AC power, or DC power. So you have all sorts of different applications that this can work with. And quite frankly, it is something I think the industry has been looking for. Now, keep in mind, this is just one example of several products from Blue Yeti as well as other manufacturers that make similar type products. So it's definitely worth looking at everything out there. What I like about this product more than anything is the fact that they've utilized some newer technology that you expect to get in some of these as well as the ability for you to power heavier current appliances through a dedicated DC output that's rated at 25 amps. So that's really cool. But Right off the bat, let's take a look at some of the features that this has. First of all, 2000 watt, 2000 watt hour rated. Again, it's relatively large in size compared to the small compact ones that you might normally see. Right on the front, you're gonna have six AC plugs. These are your standard 100 to 120 volt outlets, and you got six of them. These are pure sine wave as well. Four USB-A type ports here. You have a USB-C type port right here. You would kind of think with you know the move towards USB-C that there would be more of those, but I think most people still have the standard USB-A type outlets, so that's probably better for them. You have a 12 volt 3 amp connection here, and you have 12 volt 10 amp cigarette lighter style plug right here, or 12 volt socket right here, as well as a DC output 25 amp rated plug right here. Now this is going to require a special cable that you can get from Blue Yeti, and I believe if you have an earlier version of this if you have that cable it should be compatible as well you have your power button up here which turns the unit on and when it's on you have a nice touch screen display right here which is also kind of unique you really don't see these with touch screen displays on them and this can give you all sorts of relevant information it can tell you how much power is being used it can tell you what the load is it can tell you how much battery life you have left how long whatever you have plugged into it is going to last before it depletes the battery you have all sorts of settings in here. You can turn things on and off. It's just really cool. Plus you can detect faults and it can notify you if there's any type of fault going on with the system. Very cool. And I think a big part of owning one of these is just feeling safe, feeling that if you have this giant battery that they've given you as many safety protection features and notification features as possible to keep you from, you know, worrying that the battery is going to catch fire, or that you're going to have some type of an issue. And on the top, you have two wireless charging pads rated at 15 watts each. So, you know, you can charge your smartphones up here by simply setting them on top, which is pretty cool, kind of unique amongst these. I kind of wish that they would incorporate more features into these that can help you in the case of an emergency. Since you have a battery on board and this thing's already designed as a mobile power cell, I could see putting, you know, really bright strobe lights around the top of it in case you're trapped out in the woods or the snow and, you know, they're flying helicopters over you to try to find you. I think it'd be really cool to put some really, really bright strobe lights 
lights around the top, as well as put some camping lights around the outside of it. Maybe put a weather radio that's built into it, perhaps Bluetooth for Bluetooth speaker, you know, or even some type of a loud beacon noise that, you know, let's say you are, again, trapped out in your vehicle, you've gotten injured or something's happened, you ran out of fuel and you need a way to notify people around you that you're there, that you might've ran off the road or something and hopefully this survived. You hit a button and this thing will just start emitting a loud beeping noise or a loud chime that can notify people looking for you that you might be in distress. I think that that would make sense considering the fact that this is a giant battery and it gives you that type of capability in terms of power. So all they need to add is a few features to the outside and they could really turn this into a life-saving device, which again, I think a lot of people could find really, really handy. And it would just create more value around something like this because there are so many products like this out there that, you know, adding touchscreen display, adding, you know, 25 amp DC power output, cigarette lighter plugs, six ports, all of this is really cool stuff wireless charging all of this is a little different than some of the other units plus the 2000 watt 2000 watt hour rating again different from what else is out there however they could step it up just a little bit more and add a bit more of differentiation but all in all, this is probably the best solution of its type out there so far. As most of you know, I installed a new Furion air conditioning system on my cargo trailer. And this is their 16,500 BTU system. So this is a big boy. This is what you would expect to see in a large RV as the main air conditioning system. And this one's not ducted. It is a direct vented, so it blows off the sides here. And we have it wired to a standard wall plug. And we tried doing this with one of these competing style battery boxes and it didn't do very well. We could kick on the AC fan and we could run some space heaters, things like that, but we couldn't actually power the AC. Now, there are tons of videos on this product out there. So if you wanna get into the nitty gritty of all the intricate specs of you know, the battery and all the technical details about how this works and what it's comprised of, I recommend watching those and I may even link some of those videos in the description. So check those out because again, they go over all the nitty gritty details. But what I wanna see practically is if you buy this to power up an AC inside of your RV, will it work? And I know I've seen one video out there where somebody's done it on an R-Pod, but let's see if it will power up one larger AC. Hang tight. Okay, so here's my AC plug on the outside. I have the cord running up to the inside. And we are gonna plug this cord in right here. Okay, we're plugged in and currently it's not on so it's not drawing anything, but I need to turn AC on. It's all touch screen. Some of the other systems have little buttons that you press to turn on the different power outputs. This one has touch screen. Don't know if I like that yet. Only because if it's extremely bright outside, it may be a little difficult to see this screen. Or if your hands are wet, you know, you might not want to touch the screen. A small little button right here might come in more handy. Now in terms of outdoor rating, I don't know what the outdoor rating on this is. I hope they weather sealed it, but I'm pretty sure they likely did not. You know, it's probably safe against like light rain or a drizzle, but I I would probably recommend you keep this indoors, but just be very careful anytime you keep a power supply or anything that's putting a lot of power out indoors, you wanna take all the proper precautions. And because this is lithium iron phosphate, you wanna be very careful in what you have that can extinguish a fire if one happens, because not everything out there can. Okay, so we have it on. I'm coming up here, I'm gonna turn the fan on first. Okay, so the fan's blowing. It's been a while since I turned this on actually. Fan is blowing. Coming down here. Let's see what our load looks like. Output voltage, 120 volts. Output current is 0.6 amps. Output power is 71 watts. All right. Let's go ahead and turn on the AC and see if this stays on. I'm just gonna reach up and do it so you can see the screen. Okay, wow, that's a spike. Couldn't do it, it shut down. So let me turn it back off. Okay, so now we have a fault. AC load, it looks like it's already reset. Let's turn the fan on.
Okay, the fan is back on. Again, it's hardly drawing any amperage right now, only 72 watts. Let's try to turn the AC back on again. Nope, just doesn't have the ability to support that type of a surge. And as you can see that it spikes pretty high when it's trying to turn on the air conditioner. So you have to go through the fault screen to clear a fault. So it's ready to go again. So that was the test I really wanted to do. I know that this works with a smaller air conditioning unit. You could probably get away with an 8500 BTU or a 10,000 BTU air conditioning, possibly. 13,500 BTU, uh, that would be iffy. But in terms of a 15,000 or a 16,500 BTU air conditioning system, I don't think you're gonna have any chance of starting it. But that's what I wanted to try to find out. Again, you likely couldn't start this air conditioner even on a 2000 watt inverter gas generator. That's just because of how large the compressor is in this and how much power it takes to kick on. Now, that being said, you know, a lot of folks say, well, you can add a soft start, and that is true, but this Furion unit actually comes with a soft start capacitor built into it. So I don't believe that that would even help in this scenario on a power pack this big. All right, so now that we know the air conditioner, a large air conditioning unit in an RV isn't necessarily going to be something you can use this to power, where can something like this come in extremely useful? And that is if you're powering something like vacuum cleaners or power tools and you are going to a work site, or if you're around the RV and you're trying to get some work done, maybe you have a miter saw or a table saw, other equipment that you need to power, this can come in really handy because it can easily power this type of stuff and even more. If you have outside lighting, if you're maybe throwing a party or a gathering outside and you need to put outside lighting all around you, this is really perfect for it. So we're gonna go ahead and power both of these up and kind of demonstrate what type of power output these pull from that system. So first of all, we need to turn AC power on. So AC power is on. We're gonna start the vacuum. And then next, So with the vacuum running, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down here. You can see that it's currently pulling 635 watts, 5.3 amps. I'm gonna light up my saw now. So the reason why I'm doing this specifically with a vacuum cleaner and a circular saw is because they both pull quite a bit of power. They actually are a really good test to something like this. Right now the vacuum by itself is drawing 5.2 amps and 624 watts. But again, check that out. It spikes up to 15 amps and almost 2000 watts. Let's turn off the vacuum cleaner and I'll show you what the circular saw pulls. Okay, so the vacuum is now winding down. You see nothing being drawn. Now I'm just gonna turn on the circular saw. So I don't know if you saw that, but it spikes to 2600 watts when it turns on. But check out the amperage. 22.7 amps drawn, which means this circular saw pulls about as much current as a small air conditioning unit. That's to kind of give you an example of how equipment like this can put strain on most of these systems, but it did pretty good here. And the fact is I was able to run both the vacuum cleaner as well as this saw at the same time. So if you're doing some type of an outdoor project, maybe after a natural disaster, after a hurricane, after something where you've lost all your power and you need to get boards up, you need to start covering windows, you need to start doing repairs, even at your RV, you need to cut trees and debris out of the way and all you have is a, you know, electric powered chainsaw. This type of system can be a lifesaver and it can definitely provide you with some peace of mind. Just, you know, make sure you keep it charged. I think typical charge time, depending on how you're charging it, whether it's from solar 
I think you can charge all the way up to like 700 watts worth of solar into it, or you can charge it off of the wall or the charger that comes with it. I think it's anywhere between like four all the way up to like 15 hours, depending on how you're charging the system. But multiple ways to charge it, multiple ways to use it, a ton of uses in the home, in the RV, around the home, during a natural disaster, after a natural disaster, and I think it can come in really handy. Okay guys, so we're gonna do one more test on this AC200P power station. We're here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi. We have this Viking travel trailer. It has an 8,000 BTU Coleman air conditioning system on it. We are gonna go ahead and power this up. And I have it powered through this 30 amp connection to a 110 connection here. Gonna go ahead and power it up. We're gonna turn AC power on. Right now it's currently drawing, eh, well it was drawing a little bit more, but now it's at 71 watts and a little more than half an amp. We should have power now to everything else. Yep, there's that. All right, let's turn the air conditioning as cold as we can get it. Let's turn it on fan low. Let's do fan high. Let's quickly take a look at it outside. Okay, so with the fan on high, it's pulling 3.9 amps, 468 watts. So that's interesting. Here we go. Come on, you can do it. Nope, it didn't do it. It didn't turn on. So let me turn everything back off. Okay. So we're good to go again. Let's go ahead and try to turn the air on one more time. Okay, here we go. Oh, hold on. I just turned it straight on. I didn't go from fan to low cool. And it is working. Wow, and I can hear the compressor kicking on, so, or the compressor is on. Let's go see what kind of current it's pulling. So, we are currently drawing 9.3 amps, 1,128 watts that's pretty cool pretty cool let me go inside i'm going to see if i can turn the air conditioner on high and see if it'll support it oh my goodness oh my goodness check that out we're now on high this is definitely cold air coming out that is super cool Look at the numbers on high. Pulling 11.1 .1 amps, 1,340-ish watts. Very, very cool. Batteries at 96%. That is awesome. Yeah, so this thing is able to power the 8,000 BTU air conditioner in this Viking Saga on high without much of an issue. Not sure why I couldn't turn the AC on from fan mode without it tripping. It might have been the surge when the AC kicked on in addition to the high fan speed. But yeah, it's blowing cold air right now. That is super cool. If you have one of these smaller RVs, you should be able to power it. And the nice thing about this is you can pretty much operate everything in here, including the air conditioner, maybe aside from the microwave, but uh, the refrigerator's on too. That's what was pulling the extra current whenever I plugged it in. So the refrigerator's on and the air conditioner's on all of that power pack. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but this is really cool. And because you can recharge the Blue Yeti power system with solar, you know, you could really use the system nonstop for a long time if you had enough solar to keep it maintained. That is really, really cool. 
So yeah, I wasn't really expecting this to be able to handle the current of a large 16,500 BTU Furion air conditioner, but you know, for something small, 8,000 BTU system, something you might see in an R-Pod and these smaller Vikings, this works really well. And again, it allows you to use the air conditioner as well as the refrigerator off of it. So right now the refrigerator is pulling half an amp, 72 watts of power, and you know, this has worked really well. I'm really happy with the outcome. Very, very impressed with this if you're gonna be using it with a smaller travel trailer like this. I think it makes a lot of sense. Anyways, guys, I'll put a link to this in the description of the video if this might be something you're interested in. I love the fact that they put handles on it. I do not like the fact that there's no storage area for your cables and your chargers. I do think that that should be something that they put, some type of a pocket or even a place to hang it. I think, you know, having the ability to carry all that stuff with you probably makes this additionally valuable. And again, I would like to see something like this with some emergency features kind of built into it, considering the fact that you're gonna have this massive battery with you. Why not have some things that could help you out in a bind if you find yourself lost or stuck? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, and we'll talk to you again very soon.